It is May of 1779, and Linus Cold has just risen from a particularly rough night of sleep. He and his men had been busy drilling and getting supplies for future campaigns in the backwoods of South Carolina. Having recently decided to stay in the state and help people in need, the Rangers needed to form a plan for how they were going to conduct their campaign. They had heard stories of families being tormented by small parties of loyalists, and once word spread of the Rangers' arrival, people began showing up to the farm to request their assistance. Their first battle would come on May 17th at Blacksmith's Ford. Linus had spoken to a man who owned a small blacksmith shop about 15 miles away, and he was complaining about a band of loyalists that would raid his shop and house once every week. Linus Colt agreed to help, and he met with his staff to discuss their plan of attack. This was their first time in actual combat together, and none of them had ever led troops before. Recalling his days in the French and Indian War, Linus decided they would set up an ambush on the Loyalists and try to drive them off with as few casualties as possible. The plan was for them to surround the house and then close in once the Loyalists began to loot the house. It was a very simple plan and was identical to typical Indian raids and frontier warfare that Linus grew up with. On the morning of the 17th, Linus sent the blacksmith and his family away and stationed his men in the woods and ditches around the house. Around noon, they heard the galloping of horses coming down the road, and they kept still until the attack signal was given. Linus quickly realized that he outnumbered the small loyalist force almost two to one, and so he decided to start the attack early. It was a ferocious scene. Rifles crackled, men screamed, and horses panicked. The horses all ran, leaving the band of loyalists trapped in the yard of the house. After the initial volley, Linus called for a charge, and his men switched to their swords and hunting knives for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Only a few men from the loyalist party got off a shot, with none of them hitting their targets. Many threw their arms up and surrendered, many tried to run, and some stood and fought until they were cut down. It was nothing short of a massacre. Adrenaline was high, and even Linus found himself caught up in the intense moment. There wasn't much of a discussion as to what to do with the prisoners, so many of the rangers assumed they were taking no prisoners. Many men who had surrendered were hacked to death, and some were shot where they stood and left to bleed out slowly. Quickly coming to, Linus realized what was happening, and he called for the attack to stop. Their first battle was over in less than 10 minutes, but their reputation was set in stone for life. They had massacred a party of loyalists in one of the most brutal ways possible. Out of about 30 loyalists, only three survived, and the rangers had suffered only one wounded man. Linus set the prisoners free and warned them that if they ever met on the field of battle again, he would stop at nothing to end their lives. The bodies were stacked on hay in a field and burned. The bones were then discarded in a ditch dug off property. Linus Colt and Colt's rangers rode back to the farm, but no man said a word. They had lost control during the heat of battle and were ashamed of the atrocities they had committed. Linus and his fellow officers spent the night coming up with an elaborate array and list of signals that would be used to start attacks, during attacks, and to end attacks. Little did they know this wouldn't be their last bloody episode in the Southern Campaign. Meanwhile, the three Loyalist prisoners made it back to their camp and told the others of the brutality shown by Colts Rangers and that they had threatened to do it again. Of course, they exaggerated the story, but word was quickly spread all over the country that a band of patriots had brutally massacred a force of Loyalists and gave no quarter. News of this attack made its way to the desk of Major Richardson. Richardson was a British officer who had moved to South Carolina to train backwoods militias so that they would be ready when the British started their own southern campaign. He also had a reputation as a fierce combatant, and there were claims that he and his men had committed several atrocities of their own. Richardson quickly issued orders to all Loyalist troops in South Carolina. These orders read, 
These savages are enemies of the crown and of decency. Bring them to justice by any means necessary. Large reward guaranteed for proof of destruction. Within hours, over a thousand loyalists were on the hunt for Linus Colt and Colt's Rangers. <laughs>